Hello everybody, welcome again to another episode. This time I'm talking about what happens when we hide the way we eat. So I want to start off by telling you a little story about a woman who struggled with orthorexia and those of you who don't, who don't know what orthorexia is, orthorexia refers to obsessive behaviours over clean eating. So it's another form of food obsession, but it's a fixation on healthy and clean eating foods. So during her darkest hour, this poor woman, she was doing two workouts a day, which include really stretching, stretchiness. I cannot say that word, stretchiness. <laughs> okay, whatever. I do speak English, I promise. Really difficult activities like long, long distance running and like CrossFit circuits. And even though she was doing two workouts a day, which requires a substantial amount of energy, aka calories, to sustain her body and what her energy requirements were for the day, she also continued to restrict her diet below a certain level. So she was calorie counting to the extremes. And she knew it wasn't healthy, but all she wanted to do was desperately control the shape of her body. She wanted to maintain her identity as someone who was really strong-willed, someone who was dedicated and someone who was in control. And although she claimed to be in the best physical shape of her life, it didn't feel like enough. And she no longer trusted herself to make any decisions around food unless she was following a food plan, she didn't know what the hell to eat. And then whenever she did eat some sugar, because ultimately that's what happens when you restrict so much, she would just binge her face off. And her self-esteem was crippled because she couldn't reach her goals because they were set way too high. They were completely unrealistic. And as a result, she would find herself driving somewhere in a car and parking up somewhere where nobody could see her and then binge eating on bad foods and then hiding the wrappers. And she hid the evidence from anybody else that knew her so then they wouldn't know how much she'd eaten and how, how weak she was. And that woman was me. So I know it was a story about me to start this off with, but so many people, especially my clients, can relate to my story. And maybe you're in that place right now where you hide stuff from people. And it it go it went against my character because I like to see myself as such an honest, open person. But when I was in my deepest, darkest ways of binge eating, I would hide it from everybody. I would lie to my mum, I would lie to my partner, because I was so ashamed of what I would, what I had eaten. And I'm sure you can understand the, the, the depth of body dysmorphia, body hate, and all this shameful eating behaviour. And when we feel like a failure, it's only natural to want to hide the evidence. So shame is so difficult to deal with and it's basically an ugly beast that's what shame is and I was pondering the question you know do we binge eat at night which is when most people tend to do it because that's when our willpower is at our lowest or is it because no one's looking or we're in a situation where we can hide things and it makes me sigh because this is the hell of chronic dieting like asking ourselves all these questions like why we do what we do and why are we hiding things and we have all this shame and everything around and it's just a horrible cycle to be in. So we normally eat in front of family and friends, some like a, aka quote normal food. So we eat normally in front of our friends and family and then we stuff our faces when we're alone. But why do we do this? It's the, I, I think and what I think and my philosophy on life really works and makes sense to me. Um, The majority of this stems from the idea that certain foods are bad, like labelled bad, and that eating us then makes us bad. Like how many times have you said to your friends or family, oh I've been so good today, I've only had a salad and I went to McDonald's and I just had a Diet Coke or whatever. Or I've been so bad today or I've been naughty because I've had, and it, it always refers to the food you eat, not anything you've actually done apart from the food you eat. So we're putting too much power on food. So according to Google, God Google, 
I've just poked myself in the eye, sorry. <laughs> the definition of shame is a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by con the consciousness of wrong or foolish behaviour. And when we think it's wrong to eat certain foods, we think we're a bad person when we eat these foods, then we're ashamed of ourselves. Well, I say screw that because feeling ashamed of the way we eat only pushes ourselves further into this horrible hellish cycle aka the diet and binge cycle so it also has a knock-on effect of how we feel about our bodies so it all starts from the way we feel about our bodies which is why we want to diet in the first place and it's ironic because when we feel shame and embarrassment about our bodies we eat or we binge eat which completely counteracts the fact what we want we ultimately want to try and lose weight but when we feel shame towards our bodies we then turn to food for discomfort and then eat all the things so when we come in embarrassed by then what we've eaten after body shame we then eat in secret so the only person that knows about our deepest darkest secrets and how weak and pathetic we are is ourselves and then all hell breaks loose and then our social lives crumble our confidence crumbles everything just crumbles around us and that's when we feel this deep sense of failure and embarrassment and I'm sure you know the cycle if you're watching or listening to this so what is the path out of this mess it's a great question so I believe and I've had so much success from myself and my clients from the way that I teach is it all starts by ending the war between ourselves by giving up dieting and restriction and basically stop fighting with ourselves and this doesn't mean that always and forever you allow to eat everything and anything inside and binge eat for the rest of your life but honestly to start with that's the exact mindset that you actually need to adopt so just bear with me because you've heard me talk about this before but when practicing feeling your feelings you must always give yourself permission to continue with the binge or with the food if that's still what you really want to do. So the majority of the time you won't want to do this, but it's a promise that you have to make with yourself. So just to go back to what I mean by that, in my past um, episodes, I've talked about feeling your feelings. So if you're either about to binge or in the middle of a binge, then stop, acknowledge that this is happening, promise yourself that you're gonna go back to binging if you want to after doing this. So go to some pen and paper or go take yourself away from the environment and situation you're in at this moment and then just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and just get curious with yourself and be like, okay, what's going on right now, sister? Like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling and what am I trying to accomplish by eating this? And then just write it all down, see what comes up, practice if, for example, the emotion that came up for you was sadness, practice being in that sadness, which is difficult, which is why we use food anyway, if we're eating emotionally. Binge eating and emotional eating are so intertwined, but binge eating and emotional eating are different to one another. Binge eating um, is basically eating from a reaction from restriction. So it's like a it's a human biology need because you've restricted that you need to eat all this food so it's like human biology emotional eating is eating to cover up your emotions to fill a hole to avoid emotional discomfort just because you're bored because you're happy you want to feel even happier so it all comes down to emotions and we are emotional creatures as humans so emotional eating is a lot stronger but again is so intertwined with binge eating if you're restricting so it all comes together and the fact I'm making is, if you get curious with what you're feeling, write that down, you can then still go back to binge eating if you want to, but this is a practice of feeling your feelings and then acknowledging your emotions. So the majority of the time, you won't want to go back to the binge, but if you do, then that's okay. It's about learning to make peace with yourself and with your emotions. And what I teach is all about giving up control, not gaining control, because ultimately we can't actually control anything. We can take action towards our goals, you know, and we can have a, a suggested outcome through evidence and research and all of that, but we can't actually control the outcome. That's completely out of our hands. So the more we try and control something, especially if we're talking about food and our emotions and things like that, 
the stronger the reaction will go in the opposite direction where we'll feel completely out of control. So when we just kind of let go, it's that spiritual practice again, the art of surrender, the art of letting go, that's when everything happens and falls into place because we're not trying to control something. It's like reverse psychology, it's crazy. Reverse psychology is key because it will... It will feel very risky, it will feel very scary, but that's how you know you're doing it right. And you need to keep reminding yourself that all foods are allowed, which will be scary as hell. And this is how we disempower the foods that beckon us, because neutralising the quote-unquote bad foods so that they aren't bad anymore, and as a result, we neutralise shame too. And it, it is a process, guys, I always refer to this, it does take time, but foods that are no longer good or bad... They're just yummy, edible things that our body is asking for. It's hard to feel ashamed of what I of what we eat because food isn't a moral issue, it's just food. But the whole world around us tells us differently. So it's not your fault you feel like this. And what I'm saying to you might come might hit some of your inner beliefs and you might not be able to understand what I'm saying. And your inner belief system is so strong, the house of your beliefs in your mind is the house you live in so unless you step out first of all we need to step outside of your house look at your house and look at the walls of your house which is your belief system that you've built up through past experiences what condition you've had the environment all sorts of things you can then start to tear down your house and build a new one with beliefs that serve you and bring you the most emotional peace and happiness so there's no more reason to hide the food that we eat. To help with all of this, I want to give you some new goals. So the goals that I suggest are no more hiding, no more restricting, no more numbing and no more bad foods. But I want to increase way more feeling your feelings, way more trusting yourself, way more allowing of all foods and then way more getting quiet to listen to what your body is actually asking for. And the path from food obsession to food sanity does take an enormous amount of effort, but it's the right kind of effort. Instead of bending yourself backwards, trying to eat the exact right amount of foods or the right calories or whatever diet you're following at this moment, and failing by the way, you'll be bending yourself over backwards instead to become 100% authentic and true to yourself. And it's only when you slowly, and it is a slow process, which most people don't like to listen to, but when you start to embody your true authentic self, the part of you that wants to save the world and eat ice cream occasionally and eat cookies and brownies without binging your face off because that wouldn't feel good to you, that's when everything unfolds, everything softens and everything just falls into place because once we give, give up that tight restrictive hold of what we think we should or shouldn't be doing, that's when it becomes difficult. Once we just let go and surrender and just learn to listen to ourselves, everything falls into place and this is so scary which is why most people need help through this I needed help through this my clients need help which is why they come to me but the transformation is amazing if you need if you need help to get your to get yourself from like food freak out to food freedom I can help you because I know the steps that actually work and it's not going to be easy but I am telling you it is going to be worth it so if you would like help let me, let me guide you, let me take your hand and guide you through the whole process to food sanity. Imagine not having to hide food or feel ashamed by what you eat anymore. It's like, it's so freeing and there's so much more room in your head to do other stuff, like start a new business, for example. It's amazing. So as always, if you've got any questions, you know where I am. I'm always here for you and you can have, do and be anything you want. You just got to go out there and get it. See you soon.